that uh, in a National Film Institute, for instance, you'd find that everyone is black. I I'm just making it, you know, as an example. You'd find that maybe you go to Nigeria. The National Film Institute of Nigeria would be up of black people. Ghana would be the same. Kenya would probably be the same. You know, if you go to uh, to the Maghreb countries, they will be all Ar Ar Arabs, you know. If you go to Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, Egypt, you'll find the same, it's homogeneous that way. Tina, we don't have that uh, homogeneity. We, we, we have a complex situation, which if we do not deal with it and talk about it, we are going to find ourselves in some kind of a cul-de-sac because other African counterparts want us to deal with the history of South Africa in the same way that they deal with their years. And I'm telling you guys, while I'm alive, it's not possible because people who have an indigenous footing to South Africa are not just uh, the band to speak in South Africans. You have the Koi and the Sun. Who are the first people of this region that we are in? Okay, so you have the Koi and the Sun. You have the band to speaking uh, South Africans who are probably not as indigenous, but are indigenous, but we can, we can debate and say, well, we are all from Africa, so how indigenous in, is indigenous? But when we speak about this, this, this region here that is in the southern region, Namibia, you know, and, and South Africa, Botswana, you, you, you are getting into territory that is going to be very shifty that way, okay? Because we, we are even forgetting that who, the first people actually are a very important uh, culture and a language with a history which we are not incorporating into our 11 official languages in South Africa. But coming back to the complexities of dealing with the, the South African demographic, you see, in Zimbabwe, whites were probably about 250,000 or 300,000 whites in Zimbabwe. In, uh, if you go to Zimbabwe now, I think there are probably about 30,000 white people. We, you can, you can, you can uh, verify that. I'm too old to, to, be, to be accurate. In Mozambique, you may also have probably the same number of white people. In Namibia, you may have uh, probably a little bit more, a little bit. In South Africa, you have millions of white South Africans. You have millions of South African Indians or Indian South Africans because the Indian diaspora never forget where they come from. You have millions of colored people who are our people because my DNA is in them and, and vice versa. So how are you going to juggle with that kind of demographic? Are you going to say all the five minutes just go and run into the sea and then what happens to those that have affinities in their DNA with, and speak the language Africans, which is now an indigenous language or a hybrid of an indigenous language. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Because now we want to fight this. You know, we want, you fight like it's pull, like a, a, a pouring water into a leaking uh, bucket. You want to fight how this, this fight the same way that Abo Patrice Lumumba wanted, Abo Kwame Nkrumah, Abo, you know, when Mandela said, let us look at this one differently, we thought he's a sellout. And we still think that he is. But the problem is we are sitting with this huge demographic that we should deal with, that has created a different culture in South Africa. Uzunzanin Amakalats, who speak Africans and are proud of it, and you want to kill Africans as a language. Because when we fought it in, and I was in the, seven, in the 70s, I was in the streets that day in 1976. I had on my, the back of my school blazer, away with Africans. But we did not say that Africans should die. We said, do not impose Africans as a language of instruction in our schools as Africans. We don't want that. Stop it. But we did not say kill Africans. We didn't. That is not my understanding of what we were fighting for. Because my sister who spoke Africans, who lived in Tukom's race or North Khesek, was speaking Africans. Why would I say kill Africans when my own sister and brother were speaking Africans and I could speak it with them in Tukom's race and in North Khesek 
and in El Dorado Park. Who, what gives me the audacity to say kill it? So that is the demographic that we have to deal with and African filmmakers, especially those in South Africa, these are the kinds of things that we should tease and say, let's talk about who we are and where we are trying to go.